Hey there folks, Gary Bradley here from Creative Frontiers and in this video I'm going to show you how you can create pixel art inside of Illustrator with a 3D twist to it. If this is your first time visiting and you want to learn best practice techniques to create killer artwork, then start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss a thing. Uh, and I'm literally in this document, all I'm starting off with is a handful of swatches that I've, I've handpicked ready to colour in this Minecraft cube. Um, so I'll start underway and um, literally go to the rectangle tool. That's pretty much all I need for this to start off with. So I pick up my rectangle tool and then I'll hover over the image window here and left click. And I'm going to create a rectangle that is 400 pixels by 400 pixels and then click OK. And I'll switch to my selection tool um, and then from here I need to create the kind of the block work for the pixel art style in here so the, the way that the Minecraft stuff and a lot of the pixel art is that it has a very heavy pixelated look to it now in order to achieve that I'm going to split this rectangle up into a grid of squares which is far far easier than having to draw it from scratch at several times over so if I go up to the uh, object menu Go down the list to path and then if I choose uh, split into grid, I have worked out, I wasn't in the best maths group at school, but um, from my basic maths that I, I have with a rectangle that is 400 um, pixels wide and tall, that I can split it up into 16 equal portions. Um, so here I've got a, a number of rows which will allow me to split up into 16 rows. And each of those will have a height of 25 pixels um, with a total size of 400 pixels. And then if I turn on preview, there we go. We get 16 rows in there. I'm going to do the same for the columns. Again, uh, type in 16 and then click in there like so. And I now have, if I just swipe over here for the gutter value and type in zero for that, it gives me nice grids in there of 16 by 16, which is perfect. And then if I click OK, these are now actually separate squares, as you can see, like so. So that's the basis of the, of the cube. I've got three edges to make my cube, the top, the left hand side and the right hand side with a floating uh, example that I showed you at the start of this video. And from here, then I need to go to my swatches panel, so window and then down to swatches. And in here, I, I've removed most of the colors in here for simplicity and um, I'm going to add the colors that I have at the side of my artboard in here. So this is quite a common thing that I'll do on a regular basis. If I'm creating colors for a piece of artwork and then I decide that there's a handful of them I want to progress further, I'll add them as a color group. So it's this exact process I'm going to show you now. So I'll click and drag across these swatches here. Now these are going to represent the soil sections for the, the pixel art. And then I'll go to the swatches panel and click on the new color group icon. And this pops up on screen and I'm going to call these uh, soil and then what it'll do is it'll ask me if I want to create a set of swatches based on selected swatches in the swatches panel I don't have any selected so then it prefers to pick um, selected artwork which is what I've got here I've got five squares with a color in each what it will also do is it will then convert those colors to a global color so it'll link the colors swatches to the artwork that I apply them to which is very handy it's one of the reasons why I do it this way um, and also when I click OK, I get my colour group in there, which has got the name of soil, of course. And then I've got all my different swatches in there that I can utilise. Nice and quick and easy to save those colours. I'll click away from those and then select the three grass colours that I've picked. Again, use the same technique and I'm going to call this, as you might gather, grass um, from selected artwork and then click OK. So I now have two colour groups. And so the next step then really is that I am going to create um, a, a randomized pattern of color in here. So I am going to select all of those colors to start off with. And then I'm going to go down. I'm going to hover over the color group in there called soil. Now, you might expect the next thing would be to start clicking on each of those rectangles and, and color them separately. But there is an amazing free script. And I will give you the link to where this free script is um, available online. And um, it allows you to randomly color in multiple objects, but it's based upon what is selected in your swatches panel. So here you can see I've just clicked on the folder icon there for soil. It's now picked up the five swatches that I say for the soil. I've got all my artwork selected. I can then go to the file menu, go down to scripts, and then I can choose random swatch fill. When I click on that, that is indeed what it does. So as you can see now, we're going for this pixelated look. 
but that is perfect. It saves me so much time. Um, now, this needs a top layer of grass in here, according to the, the artwork style of Minecraft. So to do this slightly quicker, I'm going to actually switch to my lasso tool here. And then I'm going to click and hold down the mouse, keep it held down. I'm going to drag across a random set of these swatches in here, just a, a groups of them. Um, and then I have to make sure the top row is completely green. So I have to drag around those and then back to the start. And it will select a clump of them at the top there. So it's a mixture of the first and second rows really down. And then again, I can use the same technique. Click back on there like so for the, uh, for the grass this time, for the color group. Go back to file, go down to scripts and then choose random swatch fill in there. And then I can switch my selection tool and then click away. So yeah. Nice and neat and dead easy. So having done that, that's the left hand side. I need to create the right hand side plane for my 3D object. So I'm going to uh, select all of those and then hold down the Alt key, Alt click and drag and create duplicates of those just to the right hand side. And again, I can do something very similar. I can select the majority of these swatches in here. I can go back and use that same script again. Um, as I say, it's not one that I use on a on a on a day to day basis, but when I do need it, boy, does it save me so much time. And again, same technique. Again, I'll switch to my lasso tool and then click and drag over some of these swatches in here. Maybe go down a third row in there, just picking these up and um, highlighting those in there. And back to the beginning, let go of the mouse. Now they're selected. Click on the right set of colors. So when you click on the folder, it it, it activates all the colors in that group. Back to file down to scripts and random swatch fill in there like so so yeah i'm i'm happy with that that's good and one third and final flat plane edge for my 3d shape switch to my selection tool select this one hold down the alt key alt click and drag and to get this with the top now so i'm going to keep all these selected go back and click on my grass swatches back to file then choose scripts and then choose random swatch fill and I get the top inside of there. And it's quite a lot of dark ones. So I'm actually just go back again and, and obviously left click back on the group in there, file and then scripts, random swatch fill. And I'll go with that. I am fairly happy with that style now. So a nice smattering of green for the top. And now what I have to do is I am going to use these three pieces of artwork, as I mentioned, for the top, the left hand side and the right hand side. Now, in order to put them onto fake 3D, because that's what we're dealing with inside of Illustrator, fake 3D, we have to turn these into symbols. So um, having used my swatches over here, I'll go to the window menu, go down the list and then choose symbols to open up the symbols panel. Now, there's usually a collection of kind of antiquated web style icons and things in there. I've deleted them again for simplicity. And what I'm going to do in this case then is again with the selection tool, select my first side and then go to the icon here to create a new symbol. And I'm going to call this um, left. And then with that done, I'll click OK. And now that piece of artwork appears as a symbol in my symbols panel. I'll then do the same to the other two. So again, that one. Yep, you've guessed it right. And then finally, select the last one, which will be the top in here. And then ultimately, I will have now three symbols that you you kind of map onto the 3D artwork. So um, that's all pretty much good to go, really. I'm going to zoom out and then I'm going to go to my window menu and then down to artboards. And I'm going to create an extra artboard just here on the right hand side. Close that down. And again, I'll pick up my rectangle tool. And then click in the middle of that artboard in there. And again, I'll go with another 400 by 400 rectangle. Click OK to that. Pick up my selection tool. Move that into the middle of the artboard. And then I'm going to go for kind of that kind of color gray in there, neutral really, um, as a starting point. Uh, because depending on the color you pick, when you preview it in the in the dialog box, I'm going to show you next. Having a really dark color sometimes. It's difficult to judge how light and how dark each of the surfaces are because if you've never done it, uh, the 3D option inside of Illustrator, then yes, you're going to have edges that you can light and things like that. So um, from here, I'm all good to go. I'm going to go to the view menu and then choose fit art body window. And then from here, move my symbols panel up to the side. But I'm going to keep it here just to note that we've got left, right and top. Uh, keep an eye on those. Don't let them go anywhere. And then with my rectangle selected, 
go to the effect menu, go down the list of 3D and then choose extrude and bevel. Now, as typically is the case, you won't see a preview of the 3D in there. So you have to go down to the bottom, click on the preview checkbox in there and you get a very thin um, kind of rectangular surface. So it takes the front profile of your object and it kind of extrudes it. If you've ever made fresh pasta and you've pushed it through a kind of a pasta mold thing through the grinder and, and you get the shapes, that kind of thing really. So it, it, as it quite literally says, it extrudes the shape in one direction, gives it depth. Now, um, let's just first of all get this into a cube. So uh, in terms of the extrusion depth, I'm going to change that from 50 to, of course, 400. I'm going to hit the tab key because that will update. And now I have a cube essentially, so uh, equal width and height and depth. Um, and then really to get your um, your object, whatever it is, into the right kind of perspective or position, you have this thing here called a widget. So you can hover your cursor over, say, for example, an edge. And if I click and hold down the mouse and drag, you can spin that round and then you'll get a wireframe until that updates on screen. So you can hover your cursor over those edges and spin them around like so. You can go to a different edge and you can spin that forwards and you can spin it backwards. And then the final one in here is this one, the blue one over on the far edge. You can spin that and revolve it around in there like so. I would tend to say um, that this is a little bit fiddly at times. Um, I mean, you can hover your cursor straight over the top of it and you can just click and drag and you can spin the whole thing around. Um, but as I say, it, it's quite fussy and a little bit tricky to get the right kind of angle that you're looking for. So Adobe are very kindly giving us a position drop down menu. Um, at the moment I'm under custom rotation. You can choose things like um, off axis bottom. You can choose uh, things like uh, isometric left, which is fairly close to what I want. So, I, I, you know, we've got here a left and right and a top edge in there. Now, having done some experimenting and to save you the tedium of me figuring this out, I have gone to each of the angle values in here because essentially what I did is I knew that I wanted a view that looks something like this, but I just wanted to just tilt the, the rectangle, the cube in here backwards ever slightly. So I literally hover my cursor over here, clicked and then very painstakingly just pull that up a little bit to get the angle that I was looking for. Um, and then when I was happy with it, I took a note of the measurements. Now those measurements are uh, minus 38 and then hit the tab key and then 37, hit the tab key. And then the final one in there is minus 26 and then I'll hit the tab key again. So I now have, whew, it worked. Um, my cube uh, exactly placed how I wanted it to. Now, again, there's this little trick of the eye with the perspective. So there is very fortunately a perspective field in here. So if I've, as you can see, got the value hovered over and selected. If I tap the up cursor key to increase that value, you can see that if I hold down the mouse, you can intensify the perspective kind of distortion on that. Now with the figure that I went for, I chose because it's my cube, 30 degrees for the perspective distortion on there. So I was fairly happy with that kind of appearance. So that is um, the options in there for my cube. So they're the basic settings. You've got your angle, you can drag around, you could punch in some values. You can even go to these dials and drag them and spin them around, or you can go to the position menu at the top and pick one of the preset positions. I would tend to say that if you do kind of drag this around and you, you lose where the cube is and feel like you've lost control of it, going back to the position menu at the top and sometimes using front actually is a good starting point to reset the uh, the artwork. So uh, whichever you prefer, really. Uh, down here, we looked at extrusion depth in there. We set that to the same width and height to get a cube. And then bevel, you have um, corner profiles. So I'm, I'm not going to apply these, but just to show you, if I click on uh, classic, then what it'll do is it will put a corner appearance. That could be a chamfer or if I just increase the size of that. Um, ooh. Uh, it doesn't update until you let go of the mouse. And so you get that kind of appearance where you get the kind of the chamfered edges around there. So I don't want any of that. I'm going to choose none. I want a nice plain old block pixel art, but remember. And then the final stage really is to go down and click on more options. And we have, lo and behold, fake lighting setup in here. So you are given a light. So you have a proxy in here, which is of a sphere. So you can nice and clearly see how the light attenuates and things like that. And then your light is here. That's the that's the kind of the highlight side. So for this one here, I'm going to click on this and you can drag it around. You can change where the light source is. You could even, if you wanted to, 
click on this button down here which will push the light to the back of the object as well remember fake object there's no real 3d in illustrator in 2019 as it stands in the default version um but dragging this around on here i'm going to drag this up to the top like so around about here so i've got a nice highlight going down on the top and then uh, these two sides look a little bit dark so i'm actually going to add a second light by going to here and choosing new light that puts it right in the middle i'll click and drag and move that to the side around here um so i've got three edges that are lit ever so slightly differently in there um, and then if I felt that the, uh, the the intensity of light was too much or too little, you have got lighting intensity in here. So if I change that from 100 down to something quite low, you're going to drop the intensity of the light. So the power essentially of the lights in there. So I'm going to set that back up to 100. You've got ambient light. So you could, if you felt you need to increase the lighting generally, you could increase that or you could conversely decrease that in there. So I'm going to go for, I'm going to go for 40 in here and hit the tab key. I want a slightly darker edge on this side just for contrast uh, and then highlight size i'm gonna again show you the difference lower that down and increase it because we have a cube and it's not a sphere probably the easiest thing to watch this watch the sphere in the preview in here when i reduce that down notice in there the highlight intensity increases and decreases now as i say because we've got a cube that won't really have as much, that much effect on uh, on us in here so um next one is highlight size Again, so I can reduce the size of the highlights. Again, you can see there that we get this softening effect. When I increase the highlight size, we get more pronounced but smaller highlights in there, um, oddly enough. So I'm going to drag that right to the far right hand side. Blend steps is, again, if we didn't have a rectangular object and we were dealing with something spherical like the preview is, how many steps will it, can you have in here to blend between light and dark? So the default is 25 if you find you get a little banding in your shader you can increase that value but again for us it's a mute point so we have a cube but from here this is not enough because we need grass textures and things on it so you go down to map art and you're given this dialog box and you'll see here that we have across the top a symbol drop down menu which accesses symbols that we saved in this document in here and then you have surfaces the first of six it tells us because it's a cube of course we have six faces so it's a surface classed in this dialog box and it's got a red outline around this one here telling us this is the first of those six surfaces so i can go to the drop down menu and i can choose left and it puts the texture on there wow and then i can then go to my arrow here and cycle through and that looks like the back face of the far right hand side that looks like the one because it's put a little faint red outline around that one so this one click and drag and down go to right now this does sometimes happen so not a problem um you'll notice you can hover your cursor over the corners click and hold down the mouse hold down the shift key i think it will let me do and there we go you can rotate it round so the size of this region in here if i just show you if i just pull this down that's the size of the face so you can make your artwork bigger and smaller if you wish to on each of those faces i'm going to actually go down to scale to fit in there and then it throws it back again in there so hold my cursor down and swivel that round and then i get my artwork in the right place um, i'm all happy with that and then finally skip through to the top in here which is at six of six and then choose top like so which is really good so now i can choose uh, when i've done all that now at uh, shade artwork which it tells us is slower but notice now that the lighting that we added to the basic plane object has now been applied through the texture that we've got for the symbols in there. So there we go. That's how we can get our 3D object. I'll click OK in here. And then from here, I'll click OK. And that creates our object. Now, it still is a rectangle. So if you were to edit this with any kind of tools, really, in Illustrator, you will change the, the properties of that shape. Now, I don't want to do that. And the kind of the final step I do want to take then is to pick up my pen tool and um, I want to create a shadow underneath. So I'm going to use the profile of the top edge in here very loosely um, and then maybe just switch back to my direct selection tool just to grab that handle in here like so and just nudge that into right, about the right position there and then switch back to my selection tool and then I'm going to move this down like so which obviously will not be the right kind of perspective and if I drag that up in here like so and then drag this one up as well trying to match the perspective in here and then scale it down by holding down shift and alt in here like so 
I can then go to the object menu, choose a range, send to back. And then I have the makings of a shadow. I might need to just pull that down a little bit in here, just a touch like so. And then I can go to the effect menu, go down to a Photoshop effect and that's blur and then choose Gaussian, Gaussian blur, whichever you prefer. Um, again, that dialog box will pop up on screen without the preview on there. But if I turn on the preview, well, there we go. We get a nice softened edge around the outside of that you can decrease it or you can increase it. And I think I am about happy with 14.2 as it happens. Click OK, click away from that there. And that, folks, is how you create pixel based artwork with um, 3D as a twist inside of there, inside of Illustrator. Um, you'll be pleased to know that the original source files for this um, and I will include the uh, the proper rectangle size and things are available to download in the show notes as well. Um, if uh, you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up to, to help the channel. Um, and um, as always, if you're not a subscriber, you can click on the subscribe button. And then uh, if you click on the bell next to subscribe, uh, then every time I release a video, which is generally every Friday at 1230 GMT time, you'll get an alert telling you that I've, I've launched another video and that you can go and watch it and then hopefully save some time or I'll be entertained for a few minutes. But that's it, folks. Um, until next time, farewell. <laughs>